Welcome to the Path to Purpose interview show, where we share our unique and universal stories about finding and fulfilling our purpose. My name is Katya Rosanen, and I'm your host and mentor for Purpose Driven Entrepreneurs. My intention for this show is to inspire you on your path to purpose. Today, I have a pleasure to interview healing voice experts and two-time TEDx speaker, Eliana Gilad, who knows how to thrive through uncertainty. She was living through three wars and social unrest in the Middle East and developed a medically proven system for healing professionals to embody their unique voice through virtual trainings, retreats, and the therapeutic singing certification program. Let's find out more about her path. And I will also ask her best steps on how we can embody our healing voice. So let's get started. So welcome, Eliana. I'm so excited you are here. I am doubly excited to be here. <laughs> and not just excited, I feel really appreciative and honored to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> Thank you. And could you please tell us a little bit more about you? I know you have such a wide experience. I just introduced you very briefly. And also please do share where you are located now so we can put you on the map. Oh, I love that question. All right, so outside of my window, get, imagine this. I live on a seventh floor in a large tower and out of my window is an unobstructed view of the Hollywood sign. Oh, I was awesome. born underneath the Hollywood sign in a hospital named Cedars of Lebanon, mm. like Lebanon in the Middle East. And that must have been a prophecy, I figure, for my future in the Middle East. And here I am back in the Middle East where I lived for over 20 years, 25 years. And now here I am full circle back in Los Angeles. <laughs> My life is more interesting than any Hollywood movie. <laughs> and so is yours. <laughs> That's really true. That's why I love hearing personal stories because they are super yeah. interesting. And that's why our stories really matter too, because it is just what we can share from our path. And let's talk about a little bit more of your your journey was there a special event that led you to this path oh my god not one many many <laughs> many <laughs> start with, well let, let's continue on you know because stories as you say they're they're just they're they're compelling they're important they're what allow us to you know there's that imprint of you know the the myth or the archetypes you know, of a mythical journey or a heroine's journey where we start off and we go and there are many, you know, dips and turns um. and, and my life, absolutely. So if we take this uh, from my birth in Hollywood, right? And, um, and for those of you who are spiritual entrepreneurs or light workers, you may very well identify with this where you, you know, I came in, I came in conscious. I didn't learn to be conscious. I came in, I was born into this lifetime conscious and into, into Hollywood <laughs> where even, you know, in California, we achieve our enlightenment <laughs> and into a family that, uh, you know, and into a culture where material and professional and spiritual and personal don't meet. And we know which path I took and, um, I was raised to, you know, dur during the women's movement. So, you know, I was expected to be a doctor or a lawyer, or at least marry one. Mm -hmm. And, and I, let's say I was a yuppie on the spiritual path and, and I was in marketing and communications and uh, my, I hired the 613 interpreters in 23 languages for the 24 Olympic venues as manager of language services for the 1984 Summer Olympics in LA. Mm. I was going through a divorce at that period, at that time. And it, 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 like uncertainty, 
and what will be. And though it was when I was a little girl, that inner voice always said, this is not your place. But I didn't grow up in a family that, you know, they, they were from the U.S. Mm. And the, um, the reset, the turning point was, you know, the road that allowed me to jump was in the late eighties, the recession in the United States caused my employer to tell me, we're not firing you. We're just not continuing your position and look for another job. And I heard that word job and I thought, no way. I just, I can't do this anymore. I, it looks great on the outside and it looks impressive and every job, you know, I'm moving forward and forward, but I feel horrible in the inside, like caca, you know, and and I could also see the writing on the wall of what's happening now. And I already at that point was living from the inside out, not looking outside of myself for, for answers. And listening to that voice said, leave, jump. Well, here's the thing. It terrified me more to go look for another job where I'd make more money, where it would look even better and i'd feel even more horrible it was like living death and that terrified me more that i'd get there there was something deep within me that was guiding me to somewhere i had no words for that voice i didn't understand it i had no support for it even though i was ensconced in conscious spiritual circles you know for those of you who are familiar with the Sedona method, perhaps, and Lester Levinson, I'm one of the, I'm one of the early students, and I had the great fortune and gift to, to have a daily personal relationship with, well, it was never personal, yeah. nothing's yeah. personal, <laughs> and so I, I decided to jump off into the unknown, and listen to that voice because it terrified me more that I would get to the end of my life and not know why I had been born than I was terrified to jump off in the unknown and have no idea what awaited me. That was, I mean, that was the first really big, people told me I was crazy. Are you doing a geographics? Don't you know you take yourself with you wherever you go? You know, like teaching me spiritual principle when, right, you know, I mean, you get to a certain level of your consciousness, and especially when we're light workers, when we're spiritual entrepreneurs, when we have something to give, we're, we're not motivated by the outside, right? We're motivated by the inside. But how do you, you know, what happens when you have that inner drive and inner clarity, but you might not have cognitive words for it? And then, when you go to show up and speak your truth or share your truth and what comes out of your mouth is like night and day, that's a living hell. That was living hell for me. And that really was the motivator and has continued to be. It's that, that willingness to put that alignment of my inner truth and to to dare listen to it yeah that that's that's so very true and that reminds me of one of my spiritual teacher john rogers saying like your willingness to do will give you the ability to do but first you need to have that willingness and you had it even though there was the voices around you who did not agree on your your plan and your decision to make the chains, which you knew you have to do. Yeah. Well, the other thing what got me to leave LA is that, you know, I could see the writing on the wall and I decide I, I figured if I if I make the jump now and I don't have to, hmm. then I'll go through whatever I go through 
And then, you know, in another 20, 30 years, you know, however long it will be, when this stuff will happen, I'll already be on the other side. And then I could come back and be of service. And that actually is what I'm doing back here. It's how it's how I've been able to plant my flagpole. It's what, you know, living through those three wars. It, it just gave me such great, great experience to show up. You know, it's all fine and dandy when everything works well, but what happens when the proverbial caca, hit, you know, the poop hits the fan and you don't know what's next. And we're all, we're all in that place today. And, you know, if we're coming from our heads or what makes sense or the nine steps to marketing or enlightenment or, you know, whatever our process is, you could have, I'm not dissing that at all. Mm. That's how we are in the world, you know, how we operate. But if that's what, if, if you're counting on that, or maybe if you have the experience of you're doing all the right things and yeah. still no cigar, well, it may very well be that you are disconnected from the source of your true voice. Mm. When that's, when that's disconnected, you could have all the right training, you could be doing all the right things, you could have all the right words, you could have presentation training. I'm a two time TED presenter in my first TED talk, and I'm a CBS broadcaster from back when in my first TED talk, I blacked out, it doesn't have to do with how good you are. Mm. And that's the good news for you. Because you don't, it's like, the fact that you're showing up and you're watching this already, you go, you're listening to cotton and keep look at the other shows here in, you know, in this video series, because the people who are showing up here, these are people who walk their talk, you know, and, and it, it bodes very well for you, because it means that you are willing to, you're willing to admit your vulnerability. That's not your weakness. That's your strength. Mm -hmm. Truly. You, right. You know, and I, I think that's a big thing for, for light workers and spiritual entrepreneurs we're so, and, and healing professionals. We're so used to giving and there's huge opportunity today because the need is greater than the supply. Mm. But if you're coming from a place of wanting to give and give, 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 but you're not giving to you, you're not really allowing yourself. It's not even, even before you can allow yourself, first you have to dare stop long enough to listen to your true voice. And, and you said it really well, Katya, first you have to be willing to stop. <laughs> Yeah, and I think now you are tapping into this because the true voice is that was one of my questions for you. Like, well, you, for you, because you said you kind of had that from the first, but there might be a lot of people out there who are struggling with this whole concept. Like, even what's that? So can you explain a little bit, like, what does it mean, this true voice? What does it mean? Oh, that's an excellent question. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful question. Yeah, what is, <laughs> you ever wonder that? What is my true voice? Or I see a lot, you know, now today it's like your authentic voice. Well, hmm. your authentic voice. What is there like a fake voice? <laughs> I mean, it's all our voices, but here's the thing that I've discovered and that I love and that after 30 years of this, I feel I'm like, I've covered about this much. I'm like such a beginner. It's like, so most of the, just because you're not speaking it or you don't hear it doesn't mean it's not having an impact. Here's case in point. Let's take the example that I can't remember when I said it, but I did before of like, you know, you have that clarity inside what's on your heart. You know, they're the head voices, the critical head voices. And then there's the voice of your heart. You know, what's really on in your heart and soul that is really true for you. Yeah. And I know you know it because if you're a light worker, if you're a spiritual entrepreneur, you have dared 
you know, to jump. And even if you haven't yet, you're here. I mean, exactly. you're, you're taking a courageous step, you know, to, to approach something differently, right? And then there's this dissonance. Well, what's that dissonance? Mm. It's, you know, something is driving you to show up. Trust it. I really want to support you in trusting it, especially if it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And because I, I just want to say one more thing, because when you don't ask yourself why and then listen to the voice that's stopping you, that's that's is that your true voice on one hand? It is because physically it's a voice. It is running and it's running in your head and it's destroying. You're destroying you. It is your voice. Mm -hmm. But it didn't necessarily come from your voice, right? We hear all of these things as we grow up and then they go in. So we're not, you're not responsible for that voice as it gets triggered, but you are responsible for how you respond. And your, you know, let's say what I want to refer to your true voice or, you know, how I see authentic voice is that that voice that's in your heart that you might not have words for because it's beyond cognitive. It's beyond your cognitive mind, beyond rational cognitive thinking. But we haven't been trained in this modern world to consciously connect with that. And that's what this approach is a resurgence of an ancient way to connect your inner truth with your outer expression such that you're in alignment. When those two things come, when they're out of alignment, you can do everything, do everything right, but you're missing and people run or they don't come when you connect them. They're attracted to you. It's attractive. You don't even have to promote. They'll come to you. Yeah. And thank you for sharing and explaining what you mean with the true voice, because that also sometimes can be very, like, hardly you can hear it if you're not used to listen to it. It's kind of like intuition, like you need to tune in and create space to hear it. And then sometimes you might doubt I guess that might be one of the <laughs> challenges because I remember when you shared your own leap of faith that you did that reminded me like when I was about to yours go, yeah yeah you had crazy. some good stories you yeah and everybody were like are you crazy it's like crisis economical crisis and you want to start a business you are now an entrepreneur like what are you doing stay with that job but I felt in my heart that that's this is the path I need to go on now and I did take that leap of faith even though there was a lot of voices within me and outside of me <laughs> saying opposite but I chose yeah. that I listened to that do you see now Katya that uh, uh, I, I was meditating on this this morning and I didn't meditate on it it just came up you know so clearly today and I'm wondering whether you see this as well as I see my business today, it's my spiritual path. It's the way to be of service. You know, it's the conjoining of, of you know, you, you just uh, mentioned intuition. That's, that's, that's part of our true voice. Mm. You know, yet there are no words to that, right? But when you tap into that and then you, you then you, learn to connect to that. And then you develop the courage to trust what you're hearing and act upon it, not just trust it, act upon it. Then that brings you the confidence to, to share what only you have. You have special gifts that nobody else has. And we need your voice today, not yesterday, not tomorrow, like now. <laughs> And now, in your opinion, why do so many people struggle with that, like bringing forward their true voice? Oh, you know why? Okay, well, think about this, that 
<coughs> excuse me, the essence of all matter is vibratory, right? Mm -hmm. The atom, all material, this cup, uh, the body. And okay, this is like ceramic. This is really hard matter, congealed vibration, atoms, congealed atoms. Atoms are vibratory. The opposite extreme, let's say air, and then our voice. Vo sound is the first manifestation from spirit into matter. We can sculpt sound waves. We don't mm. see them. Light comes afterwards. Yeah. So, you know, our voice is our instrument, and it is the most intimate, most... powerful instrument that we have, which on both sides, uh, in my second TED talk, I have, there's research in there, it's so interesting, something like recent research has shown that 89% of the professional community, not just in North America, worldwide suffers from the technical term is glossophobia, you know, fear of, you know, fear of public presentation. I mean, it astounds me, but it doesn't because when I saw that, it's like, well, it does make sense because if in, you know, if the essence of all matter, you know, the atom is vibratory and our voice is our most intimate, it's our most real, authentic expression. When you go to express yourself, you in essence are bearing your soul. It's, te you know, and society is set up for the human beings to get along in the society. Society, human society is not set up in these days to support the express, the free expression of the individual. So in essence, when you dare to speak your truth, you're in essence kind of a pariah. Mm. And someone, or, you know, dear, dear friend many years ago, said to me, you're going to have to decide whether you want to be with 95% of the human population, and you'll have a lot of company, or if you're going to really put your freedom first and your, you know, your free expression, you're not going to have a lot of people around you. And, you know, I, my freedom is like, that's meaning that serenity, that freedom to be, do, have anything and to be at one and in alignment from the inside out. Ah, if I don't have that, why am I living? It's like the bazillion dollars and any accolades, anything you would want in this world. It's like, I don't care. It's not, you're still going to have that inner thing. And why do we want all those things anyway, right? To come to our inner peace and our serenity. Wow. That was... Uh very fascinating answer to the question thank you for taking it to a very deep level and sharing that i really appreciate that and i think there is a golden nuggets for many and now if someone has an inspiration now they are like okay you talk about that true voice and how we can embody the unique true voice so what would be the first step towards making it happen. Of course, my recommendation, connect it with Eliana, <laughs> because that would be the easiest way to get. Uh, my first recommendation, it's so funny, you know, what, <laughs> it's so funny you say that because at midnight or 1 a.m. this morning, comes in one of yesterday, we had an implementation session with our, uh, with the, one of the, with the certificates to the therapeutic singing program. and one of the women who is she's in her metamorphosis process of going from her head of, of really embodying this more and so she uh she posted in her portal a presentation that she gave and it was a beautiful presentation and and i'm reading and she's writing eliana gilad's method voices of eden and method eliana gilad says and i'm like what why, why is it Eliana Gilad? And, and it was, it's such an interesting conundrum because it's, you know, the answer is don't listen to me. 
Listen to yourself. <laughs> Don't take what I say. What I say is worth bullhooey. It's not worth anything to you. What'll make your what'll make it worth it to you if, if you dare listen. You know, we're here to serve one another. You know, Lester would say we would call Lester the ego molester. <laughs> you know, you'd like listen and see where listen to yourself inside and dare trust what you're hearing. You have your answers. Nobody else has them for you. That's the first step. And if you yeah, if you don't know how to do that or you go back into the head and well, yeah, we can help you with that in, you know, a bazillion and one different ways. And how can but, people, if they are like, okay, I might need that support, <laughs> like even trusting the true voice. So if they want yeah. to get your support, how can they find out more? Well, what I would suggest support? right now, I mean, two things. I can offer two things. One, um, you know, listening, listening to yourself, you can take advantage of this amazing neurobalancing healing voice meditation that I recorded in 2013 on a day at the ancient site of the parting of the seas in the Sinai Desert, at the shore of the Red Sea, I actually slept, slept there in a tent so that I could wake up at dawn. It's like dawn at the Red Sea. It's amazing. Oh. And it's a neurobalancing piece that I mean, this approach has been medically proven to bypass your intellect and quiet, you know, quiet that monkey mind and take you into your higher mind so that piece is really amazing and it's a piece that i composed for a project and have only used up until now with my you know with the high-end uh, private immersion clients but given what's happening in the world now i'm i've been motivated to share that with others and it feels really really good to do that so take advantage of that and the other thing is that if you really want to find your true voice, I'm also offering right now a, a jumpstart course that you can complete like in a few hours. And it's the value of that course is $997. And right now we're offering it at $47, so you get $950 off. So you're welcome to take advantage of that also. And if you have any question about anything, just to dare, please re you know, reach out. And where, where I am best reachable is in our Healing Voices Facebook group. It's a group that is geared for light workers and spiritual entrepreneurs and healing professionals to give and receive support. It's a place where it's known and clear that um, that your vulnerability is your strength. It's a place for, you know, it's leadership for leaders where we're there all equal and it's not about any one of us. And, you know, Katya, I've, I've been so uh, graced to have Katya come into our group and she shared with us about uh, store, the importance of stories and that was really, really amazing. And there's opportunity for you to have your voice heard and to promote yourself as well. You know, if you're if you're that far in your process and you want to, uh, you know, you want to give of what you have, well, there's an opportunity there as well. Wow! Thank you so much for sharing those, and you will find all the links on the show notes below. So check it out. Like it is amazing those gifts so i highly 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 recommend that you will go down and click those links and get them for you and now as we are wrapping up this time together i am asking do you have a special message that you would like to share well you know what yeah and it's musical all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm inspired <laughs> Interesting. 
Okay, the medical research that's been conducted upon this ancient healing, neurobalancing sonar, it's natural ultrasound. And we studied 20 minutes before, 20 minutes during, 20 minutes afterwards, and we waited, no, 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 what's going to happen during the music? And, you know, there were results, but it was actually in the silence afterwards that its power was most potent. And there is always a focus. Mm. So um, let's take the focus of this piece is going to be you fulfilling your purpose, okay? And really aligning your inner your inner voice to your outer expression so those who are waiting for you can truly find you and so that you can fulfill the purpose for which you were born so after we finish it, it, let's take a few moments of silence to allow for that sound it's natural ultrasound to go in and help you align to that place I know your voice makes a difference. Please do something kind for yourself today because you really, really deserve it. Your voice really makes a difference. You're the instrument. How are you going to use it today? Please, I mean it. Please do something kind for yourself today because you deserve it and others are waiting to hear your voice. Voila. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much, Eliana. That was beautiful. And thank you for your time and all the work that you do in the world. And thank you for watching the Path to Purpose interview show. If you want support on your path, join Lightworkers Who Succeed on Purpose Group. And I'm sending you loads of light and love. Stay tuned for the next episode and download the gifts from Eliana below. Bye for now. Bye. Thanks, Katya, for all the work you do.